Greetings! Welcome to Electronics 2. This is lecture number 16 and I am Bezat Razavi. Today we'll spend some time analyzing the differential pair with active load again, but this time focusing on its small signal behavior. Last time I promised that this circuit would still have the right amount of gain even though we are taking the output from only one side of it in a single-ended form and today we will prove that that is the case. All right, so here's the uh, differential pair with active load that we studied briefly last time. We said that we have a differential pair sensing V in 1 and V in 2 with a tail current source, so that part is uh, nothing strange. Uh, but then uh, the, the currents produced by M1 and M2 uh, are connected to these loads and this load is actually a current meter. As you can see, uh, we inject some current into a diode-connected device, and then this is copied over on this side. So the load of this differential pair is a current meter, and it's not symmetric. You can see that this is diode-connected, this is not. And uh, what we see is that uh, uh, the reason this is called an active load is that if V in 1 and V in 2 change with time, we have a differential signal, then the currents of M1 and M2 change with time. If the current of M1 changes, so does the current of M3, so does the current of M4. So M3 and M4 are not passive current meters. They are active current meters because some signal passes through them. And that's the reason for the terminology active load. Okay, now last time in lecture number 15, we uh, went through some basic observations to prepare ourselves for analyzing and understanding the actual circuit. So we started from uh, something like this. I said, let's just take a very simple current meter that we've seen in the past. And uh, I know that if this current which is some amount, so let's say 1 milliamp, increases by something, by delta i, then because we copy this over here, this current wants to increase. And if that current increases, this current that's going downward wants to increase, and this current source is not changing its value, this voltage has to go down, right? So again, you can think of it this way, alternatively. You can say, when this current goes up, this voltage has to go up, right? Because the current goes through a diode-connected device. If this voltage goes up, this is like a common source stage, so it wants to invert, so the output has to go down. All right, we don't actually have a use for this in this environment, but we start with the NMOS current meter because that's more intuitive, and then we switch everything around to a PMOS current meter. So here's a PMOS current meter. Okay, so same idea. We will increase this current by delta i. This current is copied over here. So the current that the PMOS device wants to inject into this node increases. Alternatively, you can say when this current increases, uh, this voltage goes down, right? We have a resistor, we are drawing current from it, this voltage goes down. As this voltage goes down, this device can be considered as a common source stage. So when the gate goes down, the output has to go up. So however you look at it, we see that the output wants to go up in response to this delta i change. All right, and one more point that was useful is if you look at the differential pair and just look at one side, just one current source on one side, one constant current source on one side for now. And we said, okay, we apply a differential input so this side goes up by delta V, this side goes down by delta V, and we just focus on the right-hand side. What, what should happen here? Well, this transistor looks like a common source stage, right? The signal goes to the gate and comes out of the drain, so it wants to invert. So when this gate goes down, this output wants to go up. Alternatively, we can say when this gate goes down, this current decreases, and when a current decreases and is connected to an impedance, that voltage wants to go up, right? Uh, so because this is connected to VDD, so that voltage wants to go up, and then uh, we have this inversion. All right, so then we try to combine this idea and this idea in the actual circuit. 
So we said that if we have a change of, uh, let's say, some change of delta V on this side and an opposite change of delta V on the other side, well, then we just have to follow the signals very carefully and see what's going on. All right. Uh, this gate voltage goes up by delta V, which means M1 wants to have more current. So the current of M1 increases by some amount, delta I. And that is reminiscent of this situation. You see that this current is increasing by delta I. Uh, so the current through M3 increases by delta I. The current through M4 increases by delta I. So V out wants to go up. So V out wants to go up. Also, if we start from the right-hand side, we say M2 has a gate voltage that goes down by some amount. So M2 now has less current. It draws less current from up here. When we draw less current, the voltage wants to go up. And that is reminiscent of this situation. So we see that there are actually two signal paths, one going this way and the other one going this way. And these two signal paths enhance each other, meaning that they, they generate a change at the output, each of them, that, and these two changes have the same polarity. So they help each other change the output. Okay, so that's the, a very intuitive and simple look at how the circuit operates. All right, so that's where we are. Uh, we need to, a few more uh, basic concepts before we delve into the small signal analysis of the circuit. So let me just ask a few questions. So question one. Uh, let's go back here and ask, uh, let's call this node X. Okay. So how much is the voltage change at X? All right, this note here. So let me change the color to red and make sure that you know where X is. All right, so the current source changes value by delta I, it increased by delta I. And we know that Vx will fall. So because this current has increased, this voltage decreases. The question is by how much? All right, these are all small signal changes, small changes, right? Okay, <clears throat> well, uh, what do I know about this device? This is a diode connected transistor and its impedance is known, right? So we know that a diode connected transistor like this acts as a two terminal device and is equivalent to uh, 1 over GM and then parallel to the RO of the transistor. RO goes from here to here and the rest of the device acts as 1 over GM. So that is the equivalent impedance that we have for the, for the device, right? Okay, so uh, all I need to do is multiply this change in the current, which is the small signal value, by this impedance to obtain the voltage change, right? So I can say that, uh, let's call this delta V out. We can say delta V out is just equal to this delta I times this impedance. So delta I uh, times one over GM in parallel, parallel with RO. <clears throat> now, we know that if a GMRO is much greater than one, uh, if GMRO is much greater than one, we know the parallel combination is given by 1 over GM times RO divided by 1 over GM plus RO. So it's just equal to 1 over GM divided by, well, let me write it more clearly to avoid any 
confusion. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we have RO, 1 over GM times RO divided by 1 over GM plus RO. So 1 plus GM RO. And if GM RO is much greater than 1, then this RO cancels and we end up with 1 over GM. So in many cases, we approximate the impedance of a diode connected device by just 1 over GM of that MOSFET. All right. Okay, so we found uh, the voltage change at X in response to a current ch change of delta I. Uh, okay, sorry, this is not delta V out. Okay, let me clear this up. So we are not interested in this. We are interested in delta Vx, right? Okay, so that's delta Vx. Okay, so delta Vx, this voltage changes by delta I times this impedance, and that's it given by this value. So we can say it's approximately equal to delta I over Gm. All right, so that's great. Now, I would like to give you a quick quiz. So, so in the same environment where we found the change in Vx, how much is the change in V out? So how much is the change in V out? Okay, I'll give you one minute to think about it. Okay, so how do we calculate the change in V out? Well, let's uh, look at the circuit carefully. What we observed is that Vx, which is here, 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 right, has changed, has gone down by this amount. And now I can think of this part of the circuit as a common source amplifier, right? The signal goes to the gate and comes up the drain. This is a PMOS amplifying device loaded by an NMOS current source. So I know that I have, uh, let's change the color to maybe blue. I have the output resistance of this device, RON. I have the output resistance of this device, ROP. So the voltage gain of this simple common source stage is given by GM of the PMOS device times RON in parallel with R O N in parallel with R O P because they both go from here to AC ground and then a negative sign. So we can say that A V is equal to minus G M P, right? G M of the PMOS device times R O N in parallel with R O P. That's the voltage gain from here to here. So that means that delta V out is equal to delta Vx, which we do have, right? So it's, that's delta I over Gm, and this Gm is Gmp because it's Gm of the diode connected device, multiplied by the voltage gain, right? And this change multiplied by the gain gives us this change. 
and a negative sign. So there's a negative sign here. Uh, well, the negative sign is already here. So GMP times RON in parallel with ROP. Okay, so yes, the GMPs cancel out. So the voltage change at the output is just uh, minus delta I times RON in parallel with ROP. That is the voltage change that we have at the output. Okay, so this seems rather abstract. Uh, in vacuum, we don't know why we're doing all of this, right? But there is one important conclusion that we can draw here. What we see is that the voltage change at this node is quite larger than the voltage change at this node, right? You can see that this was delta I over GM for this node. And this one is delta I times RON in parallel with ROP. So we know that uh, GM, 1 over GM, is a relatively small resistance. And it's a somewhat of a large resistance, right? So the key is that the change in Vx and the change in V out are not equal at all, right, in, in absolute value. So the important result here is that change in Vx is smaller than change in V out. And we will see shortly why that is interesting and, and important to us. Okay, all right, so we are now ready to attack the circuit directly and determine its input, uh, its uh, voltage gain. The voltage gain is defined as, so let me use the same color, and uh, we write the voltage gain as AV equals this voltage for small signal purposes divided by V in 1 minus V in 2, right? Because the output is single-ended. The output goes to the input of a single-ended amplifier as we saw last time. All right, so this is the voltage gain definition, and we would like to find it in terms of GMs and ROs and all that, right? All right, okay, so let's uh, find the small signal gain, small signal voltage gain. All right, well, how did we analyze differential pairs before for small signal gain? Well, we found the line of symmetry, and based on that, we grounded all the points on that line of symmetry, and we managed to break the circuit into two halves. And then we found the gain of one half, and we said the differential gain is the same as the gain of one half. Unfortunately, that's not possible here. Okay? so. We have a change of delta V here and a change of minus delta V here. That's great. So we are applying differential inputs to the circuit. That's symmetric, not a problem. But, so that current changes, right? This current increases and this current decreases, and that's fine. But can I say that the circuit is symmetric around this point, around this axis? No, because we have a diode on this side we have a current source on this side. In fact, as we saw a moment ago, the voltage change here is quite smaller than the voltage change here, right? Even though this circuit is not exactly the same as this, you can see why, right? Here, the current change flows through a diode-connected device, which has a relatively low impedance. So the voltage change is small. Same here, we have a diode, we have some current change, so the voltage change is relatively small. On the other hand, on this side, the voltage change is quite large because we have uh, a current source and another current source, so the impedance at that point is relatively large. So what we do know is that these voltage changes are not symmetric at all, unlike a standard differential pair that we studied before. And as a result of that asymmetry, we cannot assume that P is AC ground. 
okay, or its voltage does not change. So P is not AC ground. Now what you might see in some textbooks is that they mistakenly assume this node is AC ground and they calculate the voltage gain and interestingly they get the right answer. But that doesn't, that doesn't justify this, right? Because this is fundamentally not an AC ground. Okay, so we can't assume that. We have to so solve the circuit uh, by means of uh, standard analysis approaches, meaning uh, we have to write, draw the small signal model. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, you have to do this once in your lifetime, okay? Uh, you have to be patient with this analysis because it's pretty lengthy but we'll try to do it somewhat intelligently so that the results are not that difficult to obtain. All right, so I'm going to draw the small signal model of this whole thing. All right, we start with the input devices. Here's, a, let's change the color to something else. And uh, let's go to maybe, go back to black, okay. so. We start with the input sources and input transistors. So here's our input source, V in one, and V one, GM one, V one, right? I'm drawing the model for M one. M one has an output resistance. We call that R O one, and uh, the source of M1 connects to the source of M2. I have to draw the model of M2 and I have to flip it this way so that it agrees with M2. So we start with V in 2. So that's V in 2. Okay, V in 2 goes to the gate. So the gate looks like this. There's a voltage here V1 and then we have uh, that and then we have this. This is R02 and this current is GM2V2. Okay, let's make sure that you know what we're doing. Okay, so I drew this small signal model for M1 and for M2. There's a tail current source here. Uh, it's constant with time, so it becomes an open circuit. So we don't have anything down here. All right, so that is what we have for M1 and M2. Now let's go to M3. M3 is a diode connected device. So as we saw, its impedance is on the order of one over GM. It's just a resistor. So I'm going to draw a resistor in place of M3, and I will call it RD equals one over GM3, just the name RD, and it goes to the drain of this guy We'll call this node X, so this is node X. So far so good. I replace M3 with just the resistors. And this is AC ground, so that becomes AC ground. Okay, how about M4? M4 is a MOSFET. For when it comes to the small signal model, a PMOS and an NMOS have the same model. So we just draw the standard small signal model for M4. The only thing we have to be careful about is that the source terminal of M4 is on top, right? It's over here. So we have to flip our small signal model upside down to make sure that the source terminal is on top. So here's how it goes. Uh, we have this. Uh, so let me uh, draw this more carefully. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we have a small signal model for M4, so there's a current source here going upward. So I take one of these and I turn it upside down. So the current source now flows upward to AC ground. This is AC ground. We call this GM4V3. Okay, it has an output resistance, RO4. All right, and then these connect to each other, and this voltage becomes 
the gate voltage for this guy. We will call this V3, which means this is also V3, and that's GM4 V3, and then this connects to here. So I can take a moment to see what happened. The small signal model M4 has a source at AC ground. So this is the source terminal at AC ground. RO4 goes from here to AC ground. The current source goes from here, the drain, to AC ground. That current source is a function of the gate source voltage. The gate source voltage is from here to AC ground, so that's V3. And it's the same voltage as that across this diode connected device. So that's V3. The output is taken here with respect to ground. So this is V out and it's with respect to ground. Okay, we need to solve the circuit. Our objective is to find V out in terms of V in 1 minus V in 2, right? That will give us the voltage gain. Okay, so we need to write a whole bunch of KVLs and KCLs. Uh, we can just close our eyes and just write everything we can think of. Or we can go about doing this a little more intelligently so that the results uh, are a little more intuitive and we can get there more quickly. So let's just uh, look at the circuit for a while and uh, try to see what we can observe in terms of the circuit's operation and so on, right? So let me change the color to maybe green. All right, so we're going to start from this resistor here. We call the voltage V3, and the resistance is Rd, 1 over GM3. So can I say, can I uh, say something about this current here? The current that flows through this resistor, nothing goes this way, right? That goes to the gate. So this current has to be how much? Ohm's law, V3 over Rd. So we say V3 over Rd, or V3 over 1 over GM3. That's the current that has to flow through this resistor. Of course, V3 is unknown right now. Okay, so that's fine. How about this current? Can we say anything about this current here? That current is the same as that V3 over Rd. Why? Well, if you think of this as some sort of box, you see that this box has only one wire going in and one wire coming out. There's nothing else, there's no current this way, right? So electrons cannot disappear, we have conservation of charge. So if the current coming out is called V3 over Rd, the current going in also has to be V3 over Rd. So this is also V3 over Rd. That's interesting, right? Okay, how about this current? How much is this current? Same story, right? If I draw a box around this, uh, one wire goes in, one wire goes out. So this also has to be V3 over Rd. And that's not surprising, really, because what this means is that the current through this device is the same as the current through this device. After all, it's a current meter, right? So if this guy has V3 over Rd, this guy also has to have V3 over Rd. Okay, so that's all right. Let's try to write a KCL at the output node right here. So I'll change the color. So KCL at output. So I have V3 over Rd going down. So V3 over Rd going down plus, uh, how much is the current through RO4, this current? Well, V out is measured from here with respect to ground, right? So this current is V out over R4, RO4. So V out over RO4. And then this current is also going up. So we just add that in here plus GM4V3 has to be zero. Okay, so we can find V3 in terms of V out here. So we see that V3 is equal to, I take V out to the other side, I have minus V out over RO4 
and then I have 1 over RD plus a GM4. Okay? 1 over RD is how much? 1 over GM3. 1 over GM3 and 1 over GM4 uh, are the same. GM3 and GM4 are the same because we're assuming that this PMOS and this PMOS are the same. They have the same transconductance. So I can just write this as minus V out over RO4 times 2 GMP. GMP means the GM of the PMOS devices. GM of this guy or GM of this guy. Okay, so we're going to remember that for now. Okay, so far so good. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, think about the currents that are flowing here. So we're going to try to write a KCL at this node. And as usual, we call uh, this node, node P, this one here. So I want to write a KCL here, right? Uh, okay. Uh, this current is known, GM1, V1. This current is known, V3 over RD. It's only this current that's not known. I have a resistor R01. I need to find this voltage and this voltage and subtract them. This voltage is called P, VP. So that's fine. How about this voltage? How much is that voltage with respect to ground? That's V3. From here to ground, right? This is ground. So this current is V3 over R01. So we're going to write a KCL here. So KCL at X. We have GM1 V1, this guy, plus that current, which is Vx uh, V3 minus Vp over R3. So this current plus this current plus that current plus V3 over Rd should be zero. Okay? All right, let's write a KCL at the output node again, but this time with respect to these guys. So KCL at output. All right, so I have a current GM2V2. So we write that in, GM2V2. What else? I need a current through RO2, which is this voltage minus this voltage divided by RO2. How much is this voltage with respect to ground? It's V out. So V out minus VP over RO2 is the current through RO2. So V out minus VP over RO2 is the current through RO2. Okay, so we have a current going this way, a current going this way, and then we have this one. So that current, if I want to put it on this side of the KCL, has to become negative, right? All the currents that are leaving the node should add up to zero. So that should be minus V3 over RD equals zero. Okay, so these two equations are interesting because we can combine them and obtain some uh, pretty uh, simple results. All right, so RO2, uh, did I make a mistake here? This is RO2, this should be RO1, yes, this should be RO1, okay, V3 minus VP over RO1, okay, so RO1 and RO2. RO1 and RO2 are equal because this NMOS and this PMOS are the same. Um, RD is of course the same, GM1 and GM2 are also the same for these two transistors. So I'm going to subtract this whole thing from this one and see what I get. So, upon subtraction, I have GMN. I'm going to call GM1 and GM2 GMN, GM of NMOS devices, times V1 minus V2, plus, I'm subtracting this from here. So, VP goes away, because the denominators are the same. I end up with V3 minus V out. So, V3 minus V out, over RON. RO1 and RO2 will be called RON, RO of the NMOS devices. And then we have 
Uh, because we're subtracting this from this, this becomes double. So we have 2v3 over Rd equals 0. Okay, so that is the equation that we obtain. Uh, we're almost there. Uh, v3 is already expressed in terms of v out, so that's good. How about v1 minus v2? We don't like v1 minus v2. We are interested in v in 1 minus v in 2. Are these related? Yes, we remember from the past, right? We remember that v in 1, uh, v in 1 minus v1 gives us vp. v in 2 minus v, uh, this should be v2, sorry. V2 minus V2, V in 2 minus V2 should give us VP. So I have V in 1 minus V1 equals VP. And similarly, V in 2 minus V2 should be VP. So if we set these two equal, we see that V1 minus V2 is the same as V in 1 minus V in 2. So I'm going to replace this with V in 1 minus v in 2. Okay, so v3 comes from here. Uh, v1 minus v2 is replaced with this. We have only v out and v in 1 minus v in 2 in the equation. So we can find v out over v in 1 minus v in 2. Okay, so uh, let's uh, go ahead and carry this equation over to the other side. So I'm going to write this on the other side. Okay, so gmn times v in 1 minus v in 2. We'll go to the next page and see if I can remember all of that. So we have gmn v in 1 minus v in 2 plus v3 uh, minus uh, v out divided by ron plus we had uh, one more, right? So let's go back here. So uh, V3 minus V out, and then over RON, and then 2V3 over RD. So we go back to 2V3, 2V3 over RD equals 0. Okay, and what we also know is that V3 is equal to minus V out over 2 GMP ROP. Is that correct? Let's go back and check. So V3, as you can see here, is equal to minus V out over RO4 times 2 GMP. RO4, we will call it ROP, R of the PMOS device. So V3 is equal to minus V out over 2 times the intrinsic gain of the PMOS device. All right, so let's go back here. And we write that as, as this. Okay, so we just need to group things and solve the equations. So we have GMN V in 1 minus V in 2. Uh, will plus, uh, okay, so V3 is this equation. So we have minus V out over 2 GMP ROP, RON, uh, then minus V out over RON. So this one and then this one and then that one. So minus 2 V out over GMP, 2 GMP, ROP equals zero. Okay? All right, so this is what we got. Uh, we have this expression, which is the differential input voltage. V out is the output of interest. And uh, we have a V3 over RON here. So this is divided by RON. And then we have minus V out over RON. And then we have two times this divided by RD. I forgot my RD here, RD. Okay, now remember what RD was, right? So RD was one over GM3, GM of the diode connected device, uh, which we also call GMP from now on, right? Okay, 
So uh, uh, let's uh, uh, keep this on this side and take everything else to the other side. So we have gmn times v in 1 minus v in 2 equals v out. And then all of this mess. So we have 1 over 2 gmp rop ron plus 1 over ron plus this 2 cancels and this rd which is 1 over gmp cancels this so 1 over rop okay almost there all right so let's look at these numbers uh, closely and see what's going on uh, these are 1 over ROs, RO of the NMOS, RO of the PMOS. How about this? This is not just 1 over RO. This is 1 over 2 times GM, RO times RO. So this number is much smaller than this number, right? So we say this is negligible. Okay, so we have 1 over RON, 1 over RON, but then this is divided by twice the intrinsic gain. So, uh, we have these two in parallel, right? So that means that V out over V in 1 minus V in 2 is equal to GM of the NMOS times R of the NMOS in parallel with R of the PMOS. And that is the voltage gain of the differential pair with the active load. Does this look, equation look familiar? Yes, this is also the voltage gain of a fully differential circuit where the input is differential and the output is also differential. So let me draw that to make sure that we know what we're talking about, right? So this voltage gain is the same as the voltage gain of this circuit. So x and y, right? So v in 1, v in 2. So remember that vx minus vy, meaning if I take the output differentially, if I take both of them to some circuit, divided by v in 1 minus v in 2, was also, well, equal to minus gm of the NMOS device times RO of N MOS device and RO of P MOS device. You can see that easily from the half circuit, right? So if I draw the half circuit quickly, like this, you can see that we have an N MOS source follower, uh, N MOS common source stage. Uh, so the gain is GM of this times the resistance seen at this output node, which is RO of N MOS in parallel with our PMOS, right? So we see that the gain of this circuit, the differential pair with active load, when the output is taken only from one side, is equal to the gain of the other circuit, which is fully differential. So just to make sure that these two can be easily contrasted against each other, I'm going to draw the circuit that we have analyzed today so that we are clear as to what is going on, okay? So, here's one circuit, here's the other circuit. In the blue circuit, uh, the expectation is that we connect the output to a differential circuit. Okay, we utilize both X and Y, and in that case, this is the gain that we get. In the green circuit, the expectation is that we connect the output only from here to the next circuit because the next circuit has a single-ended input, right? The next circuit could not be designed to have a differential input for some reason, so it's just single-ended. But even if we do this, even we do nothing with this output, the, the gain that we obtain here is the same as the gain that we obtain here. So this gain is defined as out only from here to ground, divided by V in 1 minus V in 2. 
Whereas here, the gain is defined as this differential output divided by this differential input. So that's the key difference between this circuit, which we call a fully differential circuit, because the input is differential, the output is differential. So sometimes we call it fully differential. But that's not fully differential, right? That's differential input, but single-ended output. So the output is single-ended. All right, so that is the important distinction between the two. This completes our study of the differential pair with active load. I will see you next time.